has on the one hand seemed to be ridiculed, or on the other hand has kind of been idolized. But I think I really think we need to get back to something of what the Bible actually speaks about the church as being. Uh, I really believe the church has a wonderful place in, 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 in not only in history but in the future. I believe that Jesus is at the heartbeat of the church. And I believe when having come to Canberra in the time that we spent here, I've been amazed as I've spoken to people how many people are either disillusioned with church, have got some bad experience from about church, or just got some weird ideas about church. And uh, my kind of thing is, well, let's get back to what God's Word has to say, because ultimately, uh, you don't grade a diamond against imperfection. When you grade diamonds, you take perfection and you grade a diamond to determine its value against perfection, not against imperfection. If you grade something against imperfection, eventually you undermine the value of that thing. And eventually it starts becoming almost worthless because you're, you're measuring it not against perfection. And it's a similar thing in the context of the church. If we look at the church and just try and measure the church against the church, and against what we see and what we know and what we've experienced, we're always going to end up undervaluing and undermining what church should actually be ultimately. We need to actually go back to the Word of God and actually see what did Jesus intend the church to be? What did He actually, uh, when He came and he, and he birthed the church, when He spoke to Peter, He says, Peter, you're going to be Peter and on this rock I'm going to build my church. What did He intend? What did He actually see? What did He expect of the church? What did He purpose for the church to actually be? And so I want us to, what we've been doing over the last weeks is we've been looking at real church. And I've chosen that, that title specifically about real church because that's the kind of church we want to be. We want to be a real church. Now I'm not saying other churches aren't real. I'm just saying all I know is we want to be real. And I'm sure there's other churches out there that guys are saying we want to be real too. And we're saying fantastic. But I know for this church we're saying we want to be a real church. We don't want to have the illusion of church. We don't want to just uh, be doing the outward things. We want that to be a reality that is at the very core and the foundation of who we are as a people. And so we've been looking and, and, uh, and at this thing and uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago we looked at what the purpose of the church was. And, we, and we, those things are up on the screen now. As we, uh, as, look, it says one of the purposes of the church is to exalt God. It's the obvious one. Just lifting up the name of God. But sometimes that gets lost. You go to some churches and you kind of think, actually, what's this about? Who are we exalting here? It's actually about exalting God. It's about enjoying God. And I've said this to you guys. I said, man, church should be a place where we can enjoy ourselves. Church shouldn't, shouldn't be bland and boring and dead and just long faces and lips that you trip over. And it shouldn't be that kind of thing. It should be a place where we can actually enjoy God, enjoy who we are, enjoy one another, and just really enjoy life, abundant life. It doesn't mean that we don't have issues and you know that have an issue in church. Of course you are. But at the end of that public. But at the end of the day, we want to enjoy God. That's the purpose of the church, is to enjoy Him. It's to reveal Christ to the world out there. It's to actually show the world out there the reality of who Jesus Christ is, in a non-religious way, in a way that doesn't just freak them out, and kind of think those guys are just weird, but in a way that they kind of go, man, this is the most amazing person that we, we could ever meet, Jesus Christ. And we're seeing it through you and I, the church. It's about more thing. It's about establishing his kingdom. The purpose of the church is to establish his kingdom. It's to exercise the spiritual authority that we have. And that's why we pray and that's why prayer is so important because we have an authority as a church. That's why it's important for us to be praying for the city and praying for our unsafe friends and praying for what's going on, praying for government. That's why the word tells us to do that. Why? Because we have the spiritual authority in Christ that we need to be exercising. It's one of the purposes of the church. The church needs to have a voice spiritually. The church needs to be not hidden away. Not, not kind of just doing its own little thing on the side and not bothering anyone. No, actually, you, we need to be God-botherers. We need to be those out there who, who are actually bothering people, getting into people's faces, making a noise, being noticed. And those guys, man, you know, those guys just don't want to shut up and go away. And they just, they just, ugh. Because you read through the scriptures, you see Paul and the guys, they did that kind of stuff. You read through the book of Acts and you find that actually 
Man, they, they, they were God bothering us. They just got out there and they just got into people's faces and they did stuff and they weren't being freakish about it. They were just speaking about the reality of Christ for them. And they were making a difference. And people, you know, they, 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 they could try and ignore them, but they couldn't. We're there, we're called, the purpose of the church is to be the pillar of truth. The ones that actually set the standard, actually saying this is what truth is. Because truth today, honestly, has become so relative. Everyone has kind of got their interpretation of what is true. And what's true for you is true for you, and what's true for me is true for me. And if there are kind of different ends of the spectrum, it doesn't matter because it's okay for you and it's okay for me. That's what the world says. God doesn't say that. God says, no, there's, there's absolute truth. There's, there's truth, and the church is called to be the pillar and the foundation of that truth. Not this kind of relative thing that kind of anything goes and anything goes. No, we've got to be a church that's not afraid to stand up and say, that is wrong. That is not right. That is not true. The church is called to be a voice. And sometimes I think the church can end up being too political. And actually trying to be political and trying to say the right things and, and what needs to be said, the way it needs to be said. And I, I've got a lot more admiration for a church that's prepared to stand up and just say, that is wrong. This is what the truth is. Not scared, not intimidated, not backing down. And then a church, the purpose of the church is to equip God's people, to actually train the people of God to be effective out there in the world. To actually go and actually be disciples of Christ, to show them how to do that. And that's why church will never be just what we're doing here. Church continues. The moment we walk out of these doors and as we go out into our workplaces, church continues. And the purpose of the church, of what we do here, is to be training and equipping one another so we can be effective in what we do as we go out. So that's what we looked at in the first week. Then we looked at, the next week, we looked at the church as the house of God. And we, spoke, we looked at the scriptures about, about how the church is known as God's house. God's house. And we looked at some things. The church or house is to be lived in, not to be idolized. Okay? A, a house is to be lived in, not idolized. Church, we've got to own the church. We've got to, we've got to be, it's got to be a place that we're comfortable in. A house has got to have a heart. It's got to be a home. It's got to actually got to have a heartbeat to it. And, then, and that's, there's got to be something there that actually it's more than just the external religious stuff. There's a heartbeat within it. A house is built with a purpose. There's a purpose to the church, which is what I've just spoken about shortly. You no, know, just previous to that. A house needs constant attention. There's constant things we need to be looking at and evaluating and how effective are we being and what are we doing and constantly just paying attention to things and, and not just saying what worked yesterday is going to work today because the reality is it often doesn't. Society's moving on. And there's many things that the church is doing that are not, not necessarily biblical things, they're abiblical things. They're things that actually aren't necessarily locked in Scripture because, you know, kind of 200 years ago you wouldn't... Uh, you know, when you speak about multimedia and using, and using videos and those things, they would have thought you were insane. In fact, they probably would have thought you were almost the Antichrist. Because in that context, it didn't have no relevance. They're kind of saying, that, that's just not bizarre. But today, society's in a totally different place. Multimedia is everywhere. Everywhere we go, every day, everything, everything that we do, it's everywhere. And so, for the church to say, well, I'm not going to do multimedia, I'm saying, that's just insane. That's just, just crazy. Because that's actually an biblical thing. If that's going to help us to actually reach a generation, if that's going to help us to actually bridge the gap and enable people to actually respond to Christ, and I'm saying I'm all for it. And I'm just using that as one example. There's many other things that we can actually look at about how we do church. And so church needs constant attention. We need to be looking at how we do things, why we do things, and the effectiveness of those things that we're doing. That's not just same old, same old. A church should have a welcoming, and should, should be welcoming and have an atmosphere. There should be an atmosphere in the church. A place where we can come and, and be expectant that God's going to do something. And then lastly, you should be proud of your house. You should be proud of your church. And so those, those are some of the things that we've looked at over the last while about what the church is. And so we're going we're to have a look now at the next thing which is speaking about the church as the bride of Christ. The church as the bride of Christ. And we're going to turn our attention to the screen once again, and we're just going to look at a short clip, and then I'm going to continue from there. 